listening to Mediation Station on CHHA Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. Hi, you're listening to Mediation Station. The number to call us during the show is 416-785-0680. Each week we explore topics and ideas related to the experience of people with conflict and look to promote the profession of conflict resolvers. You can contact us at Mediation Station at greggf at primus.ca and 647-227-4734. Thank you, Alexander, for returning to do the boards. Appreciate it. Our topic tonight is called Community Development, starting with self with our guest, Odin Manali. And uh, she'll be with us very shortly to discuss matters in more depth. Our friends at the Toronto Resource Center for Peaceful Conflict Resolution at www.pcrtoronto.org would welcome your visit. The website aims to promote values, ideas, and methods of nonviolent communication and peaceful conflict resolution worldwide and to provide information about related resources available locally to greater Toronto area residents. The website also wishes to cover a wide spectrum of situations which could benefit from peaceful communication and conflict resolution skills, and to present thoughts of various cultures about the importance of peaceful coexistence. Again, the web address is www.pcrtoronto.org. Each week here at San Lorenzo on uh, Mondays from 5 to 7 p.m. at 22 Wenderley Drive, we have the uh, San Lorenzo Community Mediation Program. It's a free and confidential service, open to all community members. When you have an issue or concern within a relationship, you can contact me and we can meet to work together to deal with issues within the family, neighborhood, workplace, or community. We coach you through a situation to find better ways to deal with the situation and or the matters. So for more information, you can contact me at either greggf at primus.ca or at 647-227-4734. A couple of friends I want to also promote, both located in Texas and the U.S. One is Dave Porter, sorry, uh, Dave Hilton. The Conflict Specialist Show, which is weekly, a unique web TV show, accessible at www.conflictshow.com. He interviews and connects with individuals in the uh, mediation, dispute resolution, negotiation, conflict coaching areas. And you can subscribe to uh, his uh, show and receive each week a copy or recording of the show. The other person to uh, tune into is Patty Porter. She's known as the Texas Conflict Coach. She has a live radio blog each week on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Texas time or 8 p.m. Toronto time, and that's the Texas Conflict Coach blog, talk radio at www.texasconflictcoachshow, sorry, texasconflictcoach.com. So the two of them both do very similar work, but approach it in a little bit different way, with uh, Patty's being a live blog talk radio, and Dave's being a video presentation, really, with uh, television. So tune in to both of them and help support the, uh, the approach to deal with issues in a more positive and uh, healthier way. So you can contact us again at uh, greggf at primus dive or 647-227-4734. So as I mentioned, our guest tonight is Hoden Nanali, and uh, she's uh, with us here in the studio at 22 Lee Drive. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. So if you do want to call in, you can, you're welcome to do so. And Alexandra, who's doing the boards, also uh, functions the telephone. And the phone number again is 416-785-0680. So we're uh, talking about community development, starting with self. How about you share a bit of uh, information about your background, including your professional stuff? Um, okay, so I'm the host and founder of Integration Television, and it's a local TV show here in Toronto that primarily focuses on the Somali community, um, but we're global on YouTube, so um, we're everywhere globally. And when people would access on YouTube, they 
do a search under integration TV? Yes, it's a has, if you just go under integration TV, it'll show up as the first search yeah, on YouTube. So what other stuff is uh, important about you that you would like uh, people to understand and recognize about you? Um, I'm very much invested in um, developing communities by learning about uh, the individual first and how an individual can take who they are to empower themselves and take that knowledge to also empower um, mass amounts of people to bring about change. So people can be role models for other people. They exactly. can be motivation that other people can learn from. Yeah, inspire people by living the life that is one that they can see in themselves living. Right, and ideally they'd like to practice and be involved with as an everyday lived experience. Exactly. So what does it mean for you to work with people who are experiencing challenges in their lives? Well, I think the biggest thing that you learn when you're engaging with other human beings that are experiencing challenges is that you learn to see yourself in them. So basically, um, it's almost like they empower you at the same time when you're seeing them, they, they, that they are experiencing a challenge in their life. Because not only are you able to maybe advise them or listen to them or to understand them, but I think there's a space and opportunity for empathy when we are learning from each other and our experiences and our challenges. So, I mean, for me, in my experience, and I think this is something that you share in terms of your own experience, is that it's, it's helpful to be um, considerate, caring, and compassionate. Absolutely. It's part of your mindset, your approach, your practice. Yes. And so that resonates more effectively with individuals in terms of them responding to what you're trying to do. Well, if people feel um, genuinely that you care, they tend to share more. And I think one of the things that, um, as, a, as a person who studied journalism and who you know, when I graduated from journalism school was to be a journalist, I realized that a lot of times in the media now, we are not empathetic to human beings. And it's more about, let's get the sound bite, let's not learn about this person. And I never wanted to be that type of a journalist. Um, and I think that's why I started my own television that actually focused on my community and developing my community and their stories, because I want the space to be bigger than a 30 second sound bite. Well, I, I think the intention, too, of part of what you're doing with the program is that it's uh, to be an incentive for others. There's a message there for people to do something, and you're not trying to just, you know, sell advertising, per se. No. You're, you're trying to actually instill some change within the individuals that will then ripple into the community. Yeah, and I think, like, you know, I come from a community, um, my community, which is an amazing community, the Somali community and community, and also globally because as Somalis that are scattered everywhere, we're called the diaspora, so mm -hmm. kind of like people outside of Africa. Um, we basically have, past 25 years, lived outside of our culture and living in foreign countries, and there's an identity struggle in that, and I think sharing stories of that struggle with the audience and having people that actually want to share their story it empowers others to not feel a sense of shame if they have a certain type of problem or if they're going through a certain situation. Because when they're in shame, then there isn't a space for empathy, right? So we need to really get rid of the shame when it comes to certain topics and certain issues to empower ourselves. And people feel that uh, don't bring to light, don't talk about that. Oh, of course. Because it's, hey, it's going to bring more attention to the issue. And people see usually issues as negative things, problems rather than something's not quite working as well, maybe we need to look at it from a different perspective, and maybe we need to do some different things in order to create some positive change. Well, I think with problems comes the opportunities, right? And I think that with a lot of, what I found out was um, actually that really engaged me more was the fact that there wasn't really a big voice for young people in my community. So we had the older generation that was kind of, okay, we are, this is the way it is, and it's the way it was, so this is the way we're gonna continue. Mm -hmm. But then I met these amazing young people who are all born in this country and are basically just as much as they are Somali Canadian. And then you see the value that they bring, and I'm like, these are amazing young people that the older generation is not recognizing their talents and not wanting to let go of certain areas that they could have encouraged them and empowered them. Right. And I think that's the space where we can start to see greatness in young people to bring about change. And br bring to light the strengths of the community. Yes, the assets, absolutely. You know, I mean, there's the challenge when people migrate from one country to another in terms of with a 
assimilation and integration. Yes. So assimilation is basically giving up your sense of identity to the majority that's within that space in the, you know, without being able to exert or exercise or showcase your own cultural context, your own identity, which is the integration part. Yeah, and I think integration uh, was an awkward word for a lot of the people in the community. They were like, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to take away our Somaliness? You know, we are Somali, we're Muslim yeah. people. Right. Are you trying to like make us more like not Somali, not Muslim? Right. But what they didn't realize is that for me, integration meant when I was growing up in this country, for me it was about how do I take my cultural identity and the values that I bring mm -hmm. and then take the good stuff of the new culture Right. and say, hey, you know what, what could make me a better person by like bringing those ideas together? Because let's face it, I mean, back home, there are some ideologies that are not great, right? And I'm grateful that we were able to have certain things like freedom, able to express ourselves, and right. rights, and things like that. Yeah. But there's a lot of great things also about my Somali culture that can benefit Canadians, you know? I mean, we're an amazing community, we're always connected, we have such a, like, a sharing, caring, uh, empathetic community w amongst each other, but we don't let others in usually, and I think that is a mistake because we really need to show how amazing of a culture that we have. Right, and I, I think too with the cultural context too, sometimes tradition about your the customs that any group has, and that also connects with the uh, generational issues because the older crowd mm -hmm. are more attached to their traditions and they're less open to change, and the younger group are, quote, experienced with change and different perspectives, yes. right? And so then there's a clash within the culture about how do well, you get and voice? I, and I think that's what's happened for me, is that I, we were one of my family was one of the first Somalis to come to Canada, so we basically started to recognize the change that's needed. Um, as you kind of learn, you know, you're not gonna, you kind of, I don't know how to explain it, but like, we basically were the first ones, so we experienced so much more that we can contribute back to the new generation. Right, I mean, you know, you set, I'm not going to say a standard, you went through a lot of experiences that were challenges. Absolutely. As newcomers and individuals that, quote, the broader community may not have been as familiar with. So you had to go through those challenges in order to persevere. I won't say survive because survive just gives us a sense of limitation. Persevere is to actually overcome and excel and do even greater things. So let's talk more about this. We've got to take a break. You're listening to Mediation Station on CHHA, 1610 AM, Los Latinas. Listen to us all around the globe, www.chha1610am.ca. Support an enchanting city, paradise of the Ecuadorian Amazon. We invite you to learn more about its beauty. Visit our website www.sukua.gov.ec. Your best choice to discover the Ecuadorian Amazon is Sukua. Porque desde el exterior también hacemos revolución Ecuatorianas y ecuatorianos Ponte la camiseta Y forma parte del movimiento Alianza País Apoyemos a nuestro presidente Rafael Correa En este proceso de revolución ciudadana Carmen Trizate Desde el 18 de agosto En el Centro Comunitario San Lorenzo 22 Buen Delito Requisitos Trae cédula de identidad o pasaporte No importa si está caducado No falte, le esperamos Diez años de exaltación, voces latinas llega a su décimo aniversario y la celebración será anual. Sábado 22 de noviembre de 2014 en el Tibet Cultural Center, 40 mayo, desde las 18 horas tendremos grandes sorpresas. No lo olvides, sábado 22 de noviembre de 2014, voces latinas llega a su décimo aniversario y lo vamos a celebrar contigo. 6 y 7 de septiembre se aproxima el evento que tanto esperamos. El chancho, chancho con, con chaleco. chaleco. Tendremos a los guasos del puerto y el pandero de oro. 2981 de Dafferin Street. Desde el mediodía hasta que las velas no ardan. Asado a la chilena. Empanadas chilenas. 
de blanco y del otro, bailemos cumbia hasta el amanecer con el sonido de la sonora Palacios Patricio Farfán. Muchachita, muchachita, la peineta, ponete al centro, You are listening to Mediation Station on CHHA Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. Hello, welcome back to the program tonight, and our guest is Houghton, and we're talking about community development, starting with self. And uh, you know, the thing about community is that it's so diverse, and I know Integration TV focuses on the Somali community, which is part of the broader community there's issues out in the broader community that are affecting both back and forth. So when you started Integration TV, what was your real purpose with that? Um, well, first of all, I, like I said, I, I, my parents were the one of the first Somalis to arrive in Canada in 1984, and I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta. And it was unique because we got to experience a lot of the challenges that the people that came in the 90s would soon experience. So almost like we had at least seven years leg up on what, what was happening to us and how we adapted to the culture. Um, so when I moved back home actually um, two years ago, I saw, I was like, wow, this Toronto, this place has changed so much. You know, the young people are kind of like not excited about life. They are having a hard time like with challenges, employment. Um, so that's when I said, you know what, I'm going to do something where I get young people excited about life and being Somali and having a voice in this community and that's what I did. I sought out the best young people in this community to highlight, to learn about them, who they are, how they want to engage and let's face it, majority of them who are under 25, they don't speak Somali and it was weird that my community was like, why are you doing a show in English? I'm like, if the target audience does not speak Somali, we need to do a show in English at least to engage them, then we can bring programs where we can teach the language later on in the show. Right, it could be a purpose and incentive for people to be curious and say, oh, hmm, that's interesting, or that makes sense. How about we do that, whatever it is, including the language Well, skills. part of it also is the, remember, the culture doesn't want uh, outsiders to know who they are, right? Oh, we want to talk about that topic, such a shame, we don't right. want people to know. Yeah. But the reality is, let's face it, the more you talk about things, the better things get. You, yeah, you hope that. I mean. So getting that kind of idea or sense of openness, it takes time and effort and everybody's different as an individual, let alone a community at large. And part of the community or the cultural context too may be, let's not bring anything to our attention to our community right. because of the, what you say, the shame or saving face yeah. if something does happen. Well, for me, I think, you know, I can speak from my own personal experience. And that's why I say community development always starts with the individual. Um, I myself went through a divorce, and I think one of the biggest challenges that you go through is in our community there is a sense of shame, you know, when you go through a life challenge like that, like, oh, you're going to raise kids by yourself, you know, and I realized, like, it was, it was taking that shame and saying, you know what, there's no shame in life experiences, like, we're all here to grow, to learn, right. and to empower ourselves, and it doesn't matter, life kicks you down, you get back up, and you keep going again, that's what, that's what empowerment is, it's empowering yourself to live your best life. Yeah, and I, and I appreciate the context of what you're saying, is self-empowerment. And so for me, as a person within the field of conflict and resolution, I don't empower anybody. So it's not about empowering others, it's about helping individuals to empower themselves. Yes. So the whole concept of self-empowerment. Because everybody really, ideally, truly, would benefit from self-determination. Yes. Having the power to be able to recognize, be aware of, and empower and enrich and then make their own decisions. Yes, and that whatever you decide that it's your choice, your path, and whatever ambitions that you have, you can accomplish it. You don't need somebody else to hold your hand, to pull you up. You can find that inspiration inside you and say, you know what, just because my parents live this way, I don't have to live that way. Just because this person thinks it's embarrassing to talk about this, I can be authentic, I can be honest, I can share, I can empower, I can I can be me. Yeah, absolutely, and it's not to, and that's the whole thing too with the concept of the diversity and difference. It's not to be seen as a barrier or limitation or an obstacle. It's to be seen as an opportunity, a possibility, where each can benefit and enrich themselves from sharing that perspective. So I can learn from someone else 
about theirs and incorporate that as part of me and they can learn from me as part of who and then incorporate that as part of them. Yes, and that comes from a space of what? Sharing and a safe space. And a lot of times I think, you know, one of the biggest things I find is that when you become more honest with yourself, you respect other space. So when someone shares something with you, you respect it, you honor it, and you cherish it, and you know that they're coming from a vulnerable place. And I think that's what's needed in our community is that it's okay to share, but we also need to protect when we share. We need to know that when I'm telling you how I feel and who I am, that you're respecting that, and you're not going to go tell 20 other friends. <laughs> right, yeah, it's, it's, there's the whole thing of respect, and it's not meant as a, where you're going to take that and use it to your advantage. Yes. It's going to be for the benefit of us. Absolutely. And not from just another point of view, only an individual. So it's difficult, though, to get people to get into this whole mindset of trying to help themselves, be aware of themselves. Well, it's, it's a different way of thinking, right? Because now you're not just thinking with the crowd, you're not following somebody else, not making decisions. You're actually saying, I'm going to think for myself. Yeah. I'm going to decide how my life's going to be, who I want to be, and when I go out into the world, who am I representing? Right. It's a big challenge. Yeah, and it's a big responsibility, too, if you're aware of that, and you take ownership of, of it, too. A lot of people don't, in general. Well, responsibility. It's, it's called fear, right? So you're afraid, oh my goodness, like my past or what have I done, things mm -hmm. I've been through, uh, how can I be that person, how can I be this amazing, fabulous girl who wants to have self-esteem and confidence. You know what? You deserve it. You can do it. And I think that's when the day when you make a decision and say, I want to live my best life because nothing is guaranteed I can die any minute, any moment in time. That's, that's when that space opens up. And who cares what people think? <laughs> You know, it's being true to yourself, right? You gotta walk the talk and feel that you're walking with purpose and intention and that whoever you are engaging with is going to want to engage with you because you do show that compassion. You do show that you care, regardless of the differences that we have. And that if, you know, those negative situations are turned into, you know, more hopeful or positive things that people can learn from, yeah. All of us go through challenges or crisis of some form, yeah. and how we journey through those makes the difference in terms of, you know, or even how we view those things. You know what the funny thing that I found, though, Greg, that's amazing is when you share yourself, um, I see how it empowers other people. Like, it's, um, I, I'm most impressed by when I meet other young Somali girls that look at me and say, wow, like, I admire you. You you're inspire me to be, like, different, to really be outspoken. I mean, I've met two young ladies now that are running for city council here in Toronto. Right. Young, aggressive, amazing, phenomenal. And I'm like, I wish I had role models at that age. I could have probably been a mayor of Toronto, you know? Um, like Idol Brawley, who's running for Ward 1, and then Munira Abu Bakr, who's actually on the Toronto Metro Toronto, Housing. Toronto Community board. Housing, the board. Yeah. Phenomenal. 21-year-old, amazing. I mean, these are like young women in our community that I don't think they get voiced enough. And, and they... Sometimes I have to say, you have to own your power, right? I think so, some of the, the challenges that people don't recognize that they have this ability to do that, or a sense that they can do this, because others have told them, no, you can't be this way, you're not supposed to be this way. It's only supposed to be this way. And people are not comfortable with change. No. As we talked about and we referred to earlier, the fear of change. So people are in this place, whatever it is, and they're going through their issues, they find a way to cope, though, and they're still not happy. Ideally, they'd like to be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And in order to get through from here to there, they have to go through this unknown. Yes, and that's the space that creates that fear, like, oh my goodness, like, this is uncomfortable. It's not something I'm used to, right? Yeah, that's the, that's the space and the place of vulnerability. We have to open ourselves up because we don't know what the next moment will be and bring to us. So if we can have somebody come along with us in some supportive or assisted way that's compassionate and caring, ultimately we'll be more likely to get there. So I think part of the thing too with community development work is, is how it's approached. Yeah, it starts with self. And then what does a person do with self in terms of getting change? Well, I think if you exemplify qualities of leadership, which I think many, um, people don't understand these days is really do you walk the talk 
are you the example that you want other people to be? Integrity, you know, compassion, respect. And if, if a community feels like a leader has those qualities, they will follow you. But if you don't have those qualities and, you know, you do underhanded things or you hurt them, who, who wants that? People want people they can trust. Right, and they're not going to be negatively affected or harmed by. And so... And they want people who have the best interests yeah, of the community. Of the, of the individual and the community, right? And that they practice what they preach. Exactly. You know? There's all these idioms we could <laughs> recite, but I'm not going to get into that kind of thing. Walk the talk. <laughs> walk the talk, yeah. So, uh, you know, actions speak louder than words, too. Yeah. And that's a good one. So we're going to have to take another break, and yeah, we'll absolutely. come back, and we'll explore this in more depth when we return. You're listening to Mediation Station on CHHA, 1610 AM, Voces Latinas. Water. Good. CHHA, 1610 AM, Radio Voces Latinas, presenta a drink of water. Todos los lunes, 8 a 9 de la noche. Ideas. Información, música, escucha y refresca tu mente. Radio Voces Latinas, la voz de la comunidad. Radio Voces Latinas. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at CHHA 1610. I don't know. I'm not here to promote myself. It's a conversation. Sure. Para todas las personas que necesitan de consulta sobre migración y derecho criminal, el Centro Comunitario Latinoamericano San Lorenzo le comunica que otorga consultas gratuitas y personalizadas todos los viernes de 9 a 10 de la mañana en el 22 de Wenderley Drive, una luz al sur de Lawrence. Recuerde, todos los viernes de 9 a 10 de la mañana, consultas sobre migración con especialistas, información 416-782-29. 53. Con que desde el exterior también hacemos de revolución ecuatorianas y ecuatorianos. Ponte la camiseta y forma parte del movimiento Alianza País. Apoyemos a nuestro presidente Rafael Correa en este proceso de revolución ciudadana. Carnetízate desde el 18 de agosto en el Centro Comunitario San Lorenzo, 22 Puente Litro. Requisitos: traer cédula de identidad o pasaporte. No importa si está caducado, no falte, le esperamos. Anunciate en CHHA 1610 AM. Llama a nuestro departamento de ventas 416-782-2953 y conoce nuestros paquetes publicitarios para anunciarte en la voz de la comunidad 416-782-2953 6 y 7 de septiembre, se aproxima el evento que tanto esperamos. El chancho con chaleco, tendremos a los guasos del puerto y el pandero de oro. 29 de sí, desde el mediodía hasta que las velas no ardan. Asado a la chilena, empanadas chilenas. De blanco y de negro, bailemos cumbia hasta el amanecer con el sonido de la sonora Palacios. Patricio Farfán. Muchachita, muchachita, la peñita con el chino. Cada vez más cerca de ti. Comunícate a nuestro correo electrónico. Info arroba voceslatinas.ca 16 de 10 a el. You are listening to Mediation Station on CHHA Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. Hi, this is Greg, your host, and uh, we're with our guest, uh, Holden. We're talking about community development, starting with self. You were dancing in your chair. Yeah, I like to have fun, you know. Yeah, fun's important.